exciting. Please go ahead. Okay. So uh, my name is Jenny Nordborg, and I'm uh, uh, currently heading the uh, Division of Health at Vinova uh, and uh, also head of the Department of Bioentrepreneurship. Uh, I have a background uh, in a medical technology company. I've done research, uh, but I also worked a lot with, with small businesses. So I come from the small land area in, in Sweden and the automotive supply production company. So my interest in uh, Swedish innovation system and building up companies is wide. And I'm, this is, uh, so my mission at Vinova is uh, really, and our bold mission statement is we make Sweden richer. So what, th was the, what does that mean? Vinova develops the Swedish uh, innovation capacity and the Swedish innovation system. Uh, we are under the uh, Ministry of Enterprise and we use uh, approximately 2 billion Swedish uh, uh, crowns every year of your tax money uh, to, uh, to do what we do. Uh, we are about 200 people uh, based in Stockholm and with a small office in Brussels. And we are also uh, in the National Contact Agency for the European Research and Development uh, Programs. So... Vinova's role is to uh, connect, catalyze, and activate. And what does that mean? In activation, we think about what can we do more in health business? How can we, for example, grow the innovation capacity within uh, the uh, care system and to, to provide the, uh, the means in order to do so? Uh, how can we catalyze in order to to find new connections. So we have a, a quite a substantial uh, network that we try to also provide a networking platforms for companies, uh, for the public sector and for the academia in Sweden to work together. Uh, so that is what we do when we're in the connection platform. And we can catalyze through the uh, uh, financing uh, money that we actually have. So those of you who are familiar with Vinova, you know that when we talk about investment, we talk with investment in a broad sense. Vinova gives grants. So we invest, uh, therefore, in, in Sweden's future. And we have uh, five tools. We work with uh, investments in research and innovation projects. That can be 10-year-long projects, uh, uh, centers of excellence working together, like the Anti-Diabetic Food Center based in Lund, for example. It can also be uh, uh, short-term uh, uh, funding for a specific company that want to reach, uh, reach further. Uh, we are, are focusing a lot on building the innovation capacity in SMEs. So for you companies, uh, uh, we, you can look at, at the website and see there what we can provide for, for early stage companies. We have some, uh, some uh, early stage money. We also have for established companies who want to grow and, uh, and uh, expand through innovation and through research and development and to connect perhaps with, uh, with a new type of network. Uh, the Eurostars program, for example, is a European program where Vinova is the Swedish partner where you can work with uh, other uh, European or global uh, collaborators. Uh, also, we are heading uh, the uh, uh, IMI initiative in, in Europe for life science investments. And in IMI, there's a lot, a lot of funding uh, left. So the last calls now will be for, for very large collaborations. Also, for certainly, and that's what I started out with, we're working with policy development within this area. So, uh, and by that, uh, I'm, uh, I mean that we're working with the health business, so we're trying to refocus uh, the discussions within life science to the whole health sector and to see really the care system also as an asset, but also in policy to open up the care system as an asset and as an innovation platform and a collaborator for uh, SMEs and, uh, at the early stage, for example. We're also working a lot with the uh, innovation procurement where we have a uh, governmental commission to do so uh, this year. And we're working with the infrastructure for innovation to build that up. So as I said, we invest uh, about uh, 2 billion Swedish crowns uh, every year, uh, basically evenly uh, distributed to uh, universities. Sorry, wrong button. 
to universities as well as private companies. And private companies always invest 50% uh, of the investment. So the total uh, round here is about 4 billion Swedish crowns. Uh, so what does that mean on, on a sort of a Swedish perspective? You know that we always score very high on the innovation scoreboards, uh, but we have quite low output. So we, we score high because we have a lot of input factors. We talk about the Swedish paradox, but it's really no paradox. Uh, the part of the uh, governmental R&D that goes into needs-driven and, and innovation-driven uh, uh, research is only 6% uh, and we need the very foundation of the very good science that we have but we also have to invest more uh, together with the industry on how we actually take this to a uh, to usable stage and to market stage. And looking at the large investments on, of research in Sweden, that is of course from, from the industry uh, and just for an example for you in 2000. Uh, nine, the total industrial investment was 80 million Swedish crowns. Of that, I believe that the uh, pharmaceutical investment was about uh, 8%. So that's quite a lot, uh, whereof AstraZeneca is 80% approximately. So, so we see that we are very dependent then on the ecosystem uh, that we have around AstraZeneca and the other uh, large uh, pharmaceutical companies that we work with in Sweden. Uh, but having said that, I want to, ch to shift focus but because what we have done for the last two years is really to shift our strategy from investing in uh, more of uh, technology areas and, and sectors to focus on, on the global challenges. And when we are looking at health, what do, what do we mean? Well, we really mean how do we meet the future health and healthcare uh, challenges in, in Sweden? And those challenges are, of course, also opportunities uh, for the future. So we have a very ongoing uh, demographic transition. The uh, most aged companies uh, in the globally is Japan and Korea, but after that comes the Nordic countries and Italy. Uh, we're working together on an OECD project on, on looking at new solutions, but really also focusing on this being a, a grand, uh, sorry, market opportunity for, th for the future not looking at the elderly people as a, uh, a really only a challenge and a cost, but really on the silver economy on the future. Today, uh, just below 20% of the population in Sweden is above 65. And uh, that was sort of the next slide. In 2060, that would be 25%. In Japan in 2060, the uh, percentage of the population over 65 will be 40%. So, so that really means that there is a, a totally new landscape and we see that the, the demographic transition will not be of, of people up to 65 years of age, it will be, really be for those who are above 75 uh, years of age. And that is certainly a, a, a challenge that we have to meet. We have to look at this, uh, the way we live and the innovation landscape uh, a lot. It puts a lot of demands, but also opportunities on mobile health, on healthcare services, but of, or, of course also on pharmaceutical products and the way that we uh, provide care as a whole. So when, uh, when we talk about challenge-driven uh, driv uh, innovation at Vinova, we don't only talk, we actually do funding in this area. It was uh, our largest funding last year that we uh, kicked off and it will continue this year. So I will just uh, highlight that we have an open call right now for, for large constellations working with uh, research and finding uh, new solu solutions important to, to society. That can also provide a business opportunity. And in our strategy pro process, of course, we, look, we uh, use the business intelligence available, but we also look at the Swedish strengths. And in the health business, of course, uh, one of the Swedish strengths has really been in the large and very uh, uh, fantastic research background that we have, but it's also in the biobanks, it's also in the quality registers, and it's also in the way that we have, uh, that we are quite an innovative people, but the challenges that we have, that we are not really the early adopters of today, and that's what, uh, what all the companies are, are, are talking about uh, when wanting to have Sweden as a research uh, partner on a global perspective, we need to be attractive as a, com as a country, 
uh, on uh, m really meeting uh, the expectancies of opening up our healthcare system. And how do we do that? Well, that is, of course, a very long-term strategy. But one thing of, uh, of our first steps in this is to focus uh, not on life science, but focus on future health uh, as, a, as a whole, which includes, there, of course, uh, uh, diagnostics and, uh, and uh, prevention and, and li traditional life sciences, but quite a lot also on uh, what does open innovation mean in, in this, this area, and not only on the research side, but also on the business side. Uh, and I know that a lot of uh, uh, companies and a lot of global collaboration is, is going on uh, around this. And I think that we should really look at what will the strategic agenda for Sweden be on open innovation within the health uh, area? And how, how does the lifestyle uh, affect this? And, uh, and also, uh, uh, clean tech is a very important part of the whole uh, healthcare system. So, uh, uh, I'm getting uh, closer to the end with my last two slides. Is that okay with you now, Klaus? <laughs> Uh, you will start shouting when I'm overdue. So, wh what we are uh, really, one of the focus areas now is that how can we, uh, in addition to working with companies, also uh, look more at innovation in the uh, pub public sector. To, uh, and that means that we have to use, uh, work with incentive models, has to do a lot with innovation management, and uh, political decisions. But things are happening there, there really. As I said, we are, are stimulating innovation procurement and uh, we have a governmental commission uh, to, do, to do so and we will be uh, supporting uh, governmental agencies for uh, other uh, public organizations who want to do uh, uh, innovation procurement. We also have another uh, governmental commission from the Ministry of Social Affairs in uh, social innovation for elderly care. That just means the broad, broad, shows the broad perspective of what we are working with. And in the last slide here, I want to, to show you our strategic focus now. So apart from, from health and life sciences, uh, that, that is uh, of course transportation and environment, but also ICT uh, and services and uh, production material and innovation management. Uh, and the fo new focus areas that we have for, for this year are especially to focus more on the knowledge tank and how can we strengthen the competitiveness of the research that we do at the universities. I have been talking a lot about the, the SMEs and how we drive growth uh, through innovation uh, in the SMEs. And we, will look, we, will, uh, we are looking over our portfolio on how we work with SMEs and... Uh, I'm very much looking forward on, on a communication with you uh, on that. Speaking about communication, what yes. do you think that people should ask you now when you are finishing? I think that they should ask me uh, about this strategic innovation. Uh, what, uh, how can they contribute to this uh, discussion? And uh, this is one of our major focuses in the uh, research and innovation bill and the material that we have provided for that, that will be uh, stated this autumn. What is the strategic innovation agenda for life science in, in Sweden in 2020 and the years to come?